Welcome to the Consistently Performance Podcast, uh, focused on helping athletes win the mental game. Um, I'm Cassie Preston, and today we've got a great uh, interview lined up with Nicholas Hurd. He's uh, a good friend of mine. We grew up um, you know, training together. He's one actually the first guys I, I did some you know physical and mental training with. On um, he's got a fantastic journey from going undrafted to the OHL uh, and carving out you know quite a nice career for himself. He's now playing over in Europe. And uh, so there's lots of great lessons learned on his mindset and journey, as well as being an elite goal scorer. He's been consistently putting up numbers uh, for, for a lot of years now. So he gets to talk, touch on that with confidence and dealing with the adversities on uh, having that kind of level of uh, pressure uh, and expectations to perform. So enjoy the podcast. Reach out if you have any questions or want to join our daily calls. I know Nick's uh, already joined a couple and will be joining a few more. So uh, enjoy, guys. Can't pull it, try to clear it. All right, Herdzi, thanks for uh, joining. Um, you know, definitely a pleasure to, to have you on. I, you know, I know your story quite well, and, and we met when you were fairly young and started doing a bit of training together. Um, and you know, before you kind of had a pretty, pretty cool and unique path to, to get into pro hockey, and we'll get into that. But maybe you want to just uh, share a little bit about how we first met and uh, starting out with like CHT and our uh, little training in my basement and stuff. How was, uh, you remember those days? <laughs> Yeah, I definitely do. Um, thanks for having me on uh, on your platform. Um, yeah. It's good to see what you're doing. Yeah, thank you. Um, and uh, yeah, wow, <laughs> uh, that was I would must I think it was like when I was 14. Yeah. Um, I forget the technology you reached out to me at. Um, <laughs> maybe was, MSN or something. something. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe probably got my email. And yeah. uh, I was in third balls because I didn't think hockey was a big thing, like yeah. my path at that time. So I was only playing like house league A or 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 just A hockey in Sturgeon. Yeah. And you reached out to me, and I remember meeting you the first time at Joey's only. Yeah. I think it was you and <laughs> and Shoner, Craig. 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 Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, Craig, Craig Shon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys, me, you, and my family, we sat down at Joey's only in North <laughs> Bay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you sold me on uh on fitness yeah some and fitness training point, was, yeah yeah it was a little little porker from sturgeon uh, <laughs> uh, yeah those are those are that's where it kind of all got started um yeah. well, well, was, credit my dad he used to drive me to north bay after his shift so he'd go from north bay to sturgeon pick me up go back to north bay yeah. train at your house um yeah. It was perfect because it was a small group. Yeah. Um, I never really had a, a mentor like that at that age, yeah. specifically for hockey. So it was nice to to have that group. I think it was me, you, Hebert, yeah. Chris Hebert, um, Bouchard. Yeah, yeah, Bouch was there, yeah. So it was a good little group. Was there. Yeah, there's a couple of us. It was perfect because yeah. we yeah. all got to work out together. Um, yeah. I really got to understand the importance of fitness. Yeah. Um, you had the perfect setup in your basement for <laughs> yeah. three of us. Yeah. Um, and then Sean had that sweet uh, shooting. Uh, yeah, shooting garage. In his garage. Yeah. Shooting garage. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was like one of the funnest times for me um, ever yeah. working out because it was just real. We were just a close group. Yeah. North was... Bay trying to get better and, and start the journey. Yeah, I know for sure. I remember even like – Cause even then like it would call the complete hockey train, bringing in the mindset stuff right from there. And I don't know if you remember any of those lessons, but uh, I used to try and pre trade when I was only like 19, 20, right? Like it was, yeah. I was a young guy still myself, but uh, no, those are good times. And you guys, you guys were great. Like, you know, we had a good group of uh, guys. So it was a kind of a fun way to start my kind of like hockey school and coaching careers and, and starting to work on the mental side. But yeah, um, that was, that was fun. Cause we had a great time. Yeah. But we also took it, very seriously yeah and you know, what I liked about you it's like you had you had uh uh Meg's there and you even yeah. had Lance and yeah, they were Lance like show up. Yeah. Lance yeah. They could tell, take us out for for runs yeah. yeah but it was just a good group of like older I guess guys who established themselves either Quebec League or you're in the OHL, OHL. at the time yeah. and it's just a good like uh stepping stone or people to learn from for us trying to get to the level where you guys are at yeah no that was awesome and uh and then and then obviously we, we can touch on your career but in short it's like you know playing in in north bay minor hockey and 
uh, didn't get the OHL draft, played your midget years, and then eventually went to the Q, uh, finished out playing junior hockey. You know, you had the RBC Cup in your final year, and then went to to, um, to Queens and played university hockey and then got to, to go to the coast and even, you know, into the A all in one year. And then, you know, been playing a lot of pro hockey in Europe. So we'll get into all those steps. Maybe you want to kind of uh, go and do first, like those, you know, the OHL draft and the, cause you know, that's a big thing, you know, it's happening, you know, tomorrow and, and, and these uh, for a lot of guys right now, that's a big focus. And, and then you, you know, you stuck out, I think you played two more years of midget after, right. And I, I don't remember you lighten it up, but uh Maybe you want to just talk about those years, that transition from, you know, the OHL draft years and minor hockey, and then, you know, eventually you go, you went over to the queue as well, like Mark Burke did. Um, but you want to talk about those years, and we'll, we'll kind of keep going through your career. Yeah, uh, I remember those uh, pre- pretty vividly because um, I remember, well, the whole reason why we joined you is to was pretty much for the OHL draft and, yeah. and to work up to tomorrow's big day for all these uh 15 year old 16 year olds and I remember doing very well the years after training with you my first Mm -hmm. year midget I think it was top Mm -hmm. in scoring or top three and then um I remember going to the Skyhawks um pre-camp I think it's yeah they they would have a a mini camp right around this time and there was me and another guy um same age uh played midget against each other mm-hmm. and just everyone t- hyping up the ohl draft and i thought i put myself in a good position yeah. for it um doing well at the camp that day too so i was like holy shit this is actually going to happen yeah. talk to one or two teams um and then that day came and i remember my dad always saying like you don't have to look at the computer like it was kind of nice that I was at the camp, so I stayed away from it. Yeah. And he was, I think, on the side checking mm-hmm. um, the updates. Mm-hmm. And then I, th- I don't know if the draft ends at a specific time, like in the afternoon. I can't yeah, really I think, remember. Yeah, at a certain point. I'm not sure the exact time, um, maybe like 3 or 4 p.m. or something. 3 or 4 p.m., yeah. yeah. And I remember, I'll always remember stretching um, after one of our ice sessions. And the one kid got drafted and I was like, Oh shit. Like, okay. I know the time's coming to an end. Yeah. No one's came here. My dad hasn't come or anybody yeah. hasn't spoke to me about it. And then the yeah. time rolled by and I was just, I was devastated pretty much. Yeah. Cause you, you want the title of yeah. being draft selected mm-hmm. uh, in the OHL. Cause you from Ontario, obviously, and you want to play in that league as it's, one of the best in the world for getting to the, the ultimate goal. Yeah. Uh, so that was a very tough day. And I remember my dad telling me like, and everyone else as time was going on, but my dad spe- uh, specifically said like, it's not over yet. Like keep your head mm-hmm. down, yeah. work hard. Um, I ended up getting cut again from the North Bay Skyhawks. I think the beginning of that coming season, yeah, that's the junior A team there at the time, yeah. The junior A team there at the time. Yeah. And that was an, the second kind of blow. I was like, damn, am, am I not, like, ready to make this junior step? Mm-hmm. Um, where I feel like I, I did very well through camp. I was yeah, hitting with the, the other 16-year-old at the time, doing very well. Mm-hmm. And uh, that happened. And it was, my own, it was my own local junior A team. So I was, like, almost – yeah really concerned because it's like even like the local guys the local hockey um figures in our community are not even giving me a chance so I was like damn like maybe it isn't for me a little bit but then yeah. I think the clarity came when I was playing my eight, 17 year midget season I was back with uh, a group of friends that we kind of grew up together um we were doing well. I was doing well. And uh, we went to the Gatno tournament. And for mm-hmm. some reason, we didn't play very many uh, Ontario tournaments for mm-hmm. playing North Bay minor hockey. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I for some reason. I don't know yeah. who was scheduling that. But yeah. <laughs> we ended up at a Gatno tournament where yeah. I was most scouted for. Yeah. Uh, 
Quebec League. Yeah. And that tournament, I, I played really well. And there was one guy who stuck out to me or came, approached my dad and I, yeah. Roger Shannon. From uh, He was scouting for Lewiston at the time, Maniacs. Mm-hmm. And that's when the ball started rolling. I was like, holy shit, I still mm-hmm. make uh, major junior um, at the time. So that was like, when I started speaking to him, the dream started to come back a little bit more. Yeah. Because um, he started to give me a little bit of light to play at the, one of the top leagues for mm-hmm. my age group. Yeah. School, school was never really uh, an option back then. We didn't yeah. really, I just, maybe because we didn't have many ties to it or yeah. we weren't exposed to the South where college mm-hmm. recruiters would go. Yeah. Um, so all I knew was try to make it to major yeah. junior, the OHL. Yeah. So that's how uh, the whole midget kind of process went for me, which was yeah. looking back pretty crazy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's a, it's a, it's a great testament to like, uh, cause a lot of guys even like they want to jump to junior so fast, right? Like, so there's one, like kind of, like you said, setback with the OHL draft and a setback with, you know, not making junior for a couple of years, but then, you know, but then all of a sudden it's like it clicks and you're playing well at the right time. Somebody sees you and then you start to get that, you know, progress. And then you, uh, obviously you jumped over to the queue and then you had a, you know, a pretty successful junior eight career and you finished in Woodstock. You want to maybe just talk about, you know, playing in the queue and, and, and jumping. And, and I know you had a, you guys went to the RBC finals and uh, with Woodstock and maybe just talk a bit about those junior days and, and what that was like. Yeah. The junior days were, were interesting as well. Cause I, I went to the Quebec league and you know, when you, I, I like some guys might think they're like hot shit when they make, finally make the, the OHL mm-hmm. and, and, mm-hmm. and whatnot. But that was like a huge opener. Cause I was coming out of midget. I think I, I was, I was doing well. I was probably one of the top in the league and I, you go in and you're, you're feeling pretty confident about your game and you think, you know, everything about hockey. But yeah. <laughs> that first that first year of um, playing in the Quebec League yeah. uh, was a huge eye opener. Mm-hmm. Like that's when you realize like you got NHL draft picks, you got mm-hmm. guys who are six three, um, two twenty, like just monsters. <laughs> out there. And I know they're still kids, but like yeah. I was not a very big guy coming in or very like physically fit big guy coming in yeah um and just the the detail of hockey kind of really ramped up for me right away and I was like and I'll always remember the one practice I had that year I was fighting for a a spot in the lineup and the coach made me practice dumping the puck in (laughs) while taking contact oh yeah I think I ran it like 50 times the guy (laughs) stayed down the board Stick my hand out. He would yeah. come and con, and I just like soft chip it in the boards. And I'm yeah. like, never learn yeah. detail like that in hockey. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that was a big eye opener. I even got traded my first year um, yeah. in the Quebec League. Mm-hmm. So that was a whole new experience yeah. for me. I was like, wow, like these were my teammates, and now yeah. I won't see them anymore. Yeah. I was just like, what? I have to <laughs> meet new people. Up all, I have to pack up all my stuff. I got to go to another team, like yeah. meet more people and get yeah. settled again. And yeah. I was just like, what is this yeah. hockey world like? Yeah. Um, so that, that whole year was pretty, uh, yeah. it was an emotional roller coaster. Like, I remember calling home being like, what is like, my What's dad's like yeah, this is. This, yeah. this is the life like I yeah. know it's just the beginning of your journey but this is what it's like mm-hmm. and kind of settling me down a little bit and just saying keep going keep playing hockey um, and then another big learning curve for me was so that year finished and then mm-hmm. I went back for training camp mm-hmm. and the team that I was with wanted to do a whole like overhaul and like yeah had a little bit of new management and they wanted to take the team in this direction. Mm-hmm. So I ended up uh, getting cut from the team at 18. And I was, that was like a huge mm. setback. I'm like, yeah. oh God, like 
yeah. which I didn't, I never thought myself to play junior A. Yeah. As soon as I made the Quebec league, I'm like, yeah. junior A is like a, like a dead end spot for me. Like, yeah. um, especially out East, like yeah. what's, what's yeah. hockey like out East. Yeah. And I'll tell you, um, Woodstock Slammers at the time, some, I didn't even know they had like a, a draft for players' rights in yeah. junior A. I didn't yeah. have no idea if for the Maritimes. Yeah. So I ended up getting all packed again, mm -hmm. pretty much like freaking out to my parents. I didn't really have an agent at the time. Like, yeah. what is happening? My career is over. Yeah. And I landed in a small town in Woodstock, New Brunswick. Yeah. And that whole community, that whole organization changed yeah. my whole perspective, my whole um, kind of lifestyle towards hockey yeah. all around. Like that's where I really found my groove. That's where the first time, I guess, in my small junior career that I had mm -hmm. a coach that really trusted my mm -hmm. game, mm -hmm. what I was all about. And uh, yeah, that those three years of my life yeah. were some of the funnest hockey that I've played. Yeah. Um, Cause we, we won the title, the league title twice. Um, like you yeah. said earlier, we ended up winning the regionals my last year. Yeah. We ended up uh, two minutes from, from possibly winning the, yeah. the, national, the title. Yeah. And I think the biggest reason there is, yeah, he gave me the, the comfort of just being, the guy there mm -hmm. I, I was like Megs was on the other day you see a lot of transactions in hockey yeah and learning early like you could be comfortable but you can't be that mm -hmm. comfortable because, yeah <laughs> yeah um, I learned that another lesson in the East Coast League because that's <laughs> that's, wild. that's like the wild west <laughs> yeah transactions. but in junior two you see you see guys who it's like a country club. You see guys who you're close with the whole year yeah. and then they have a trade deadline. And then the guy you've battled with for six months yeah. gets to your rival team or, or you get to another club and you're just like, man, that sucks. Cause yeah. he, he puts so much time and effort into getting mm -hmm. us to where we are. Yeah. And then that, but I think our coach really allowed me to be the player that I've, always thought I am mm -hmm. um, had a great owner who who took care of us who yeah. never um, allowed us to think that we had any other problems yeah um, off the ice or uh, mm -hmm. playing wise he always gave mm -hmm. us the top equipment he gave us mm -hmm. um, great families to live with yeah um, so that was a time where I was like very comfortable and we were we were one of the best teams in the country i think all three years which also, yeah. also makes it makes it yeah. very fun to play yeah that helps yeah, a little those bit are some, those were some crazy uh yeah. crazy early years of my junior and then uh woodstock is kind of where i set my roots into yeah how i developed the game yeah no yeah. for sure well, that's, that, that's cool. And like, and, and like, you know, obviously you lit it up there pretty, pretty good. And the, the RBC finals would have been a bit of heartbreak. And then, but then you then took that and you, you came and fly in a university hockey, right? At Guelph and, uh, um, and you guys did pretty well. Like, I think you guys, did you guys win the Queens cup or you yeah, went to the, yeah, we the Queens cup my third Queens year. Cup. Yeah. Like it's, so you guys had uh, some, some quite a bit of success there and like that now you're playing against guys like that's, we do we play a game against each other i think once or twice yeah. right so um yeah. <laughs> right like guys that play in the ohl like they go and play in the in the canadian university league and, and you came in and did better than, than most guys right and, and did really well there and and kept your stride going and, and and kept progressing right so again really unique you know career path and paving your own path and um obviously those would have been some pretty developmental years like you know taking what you had in woodstock and jumping it to to another level um, you want to just talk about, you know, the, the decision to go to Guelph in, in those three years and, the, you know, the continued development you had in um, playing there. So, yeah. And, and going back to the Woodstock uh, days, I think what really helped my career to get to even the Guelph stage yeah. is yeah. we were the only uh, team, junior A team, 
in yeah. the town. Yeah. So we had ice sessions. So we would practice for an hour. Um, yeah. And then the ice was free f- until yeah. minor hockey started in, um, at like yeah. six. Yeah. <laughs> so if, if we really wanted to, the, the Zamboni driver or the people yeah. staff working would let us stay out there for hours. Oh, yeah. So like, I mean, there's yeah. like few of us that we would play post or we would yeah. work on skills. So yeah. that's where a time where we worked on so much. And yeah. I think that's where I really developed a lot of my skill set. Um, more so than in the Quebec League is with mm-hmm. them because we just fooled around, but also took it a little bit seriously. Yeah. Um, and then the whole Guelph thing was a crazy story. Um, cause I was going to Nipissing after my 19 year old season mm-hmm. in junior. Cause I thought I had enough. I was like, yeah. all right, I've, yeah. I tore the league up twice. I won the yeah. championship once. Yeah. Time to move home again, try my, another stint with North Bay hockey and the university <laughs> and, and go with guys I played with before. Yeah, because two of my line mates my first year ended up graduating to Nipissing, so I yeah. think we all wanted to play again yeah. or with each other again and Nip. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, that went, and that was just a very sour experience yeah. um, with that organization. And I chose to go back my twenty-year-old year yeah. to junior, and then we went on that miraculous run. Mm-hmm. So then after after the we won the championship the league championship we went to a regional one in canada yeah and there was a guy on my team tim campbell who played in the ohl um yeah. for guelph yeah who was getting recruited by guelph actually sean camp was recruiting yeah. him from our team to go to guelph and he saw us play um in the canada tournament the fred mm-hmm. page cup and he i guess somehow i caught his eye while playing mm-hmm. So the, the three of us went out for uh, breakfast one morning, um, mm-hmm. introduced ourselves, talked about the school. He liked our, our game. He want, told us to come on a recruitment trip. Yeah. And uh, yes, yeah, so once the season ended, um, we were in contact. I was in contact with Brock too. Mm-hmm. Um, so me and the family, we packed the car. We went down to Brock for a day. Mm-hmm. Um, checked out the school, did the whole school visit with them. Mm -hmm. And then I, the next day went up to Guelph and I had guys on Guelph that I played with in Woodstock. Um, Ken, Ken Peroff was there. He's still there. (laughs) He's another North Bay guy that was uh, played in the OHL and I kind of watched his career go. So I knew he was there and another Northern boy, uh, Cody St. Jock, he was a OHL guy. He's from yeah. Timmins or Jericho Falls. Mm-hmm. So I just felt very comfortable with the small group that I was visiting with. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, it's nice to reconnect with some of the, some guys that I've known for a long yeah. time. And I, uh, uh, one weekend in Guelph, um, <laughs> <laughs> kind of just uh, got the mindset right. And I was yeah. like, I can't, can't miss this opportunity. Um, so that's how I kind of ended up at Guelph University. Yeah. Well, and then, cool. and then, like you said, when I showed up there, that was like another eye opener, similar to my first year in the Quebec League, like yeah. playing with guys who were at NHL camps, yeah, established OHL careers, mm-hmm. um, just big names. Yeah. Maybe didn't want to take the step or didn't get drafted high enough to mm-hmm. go to the NHL or been to camps. Yeah. yeah. Playing against guys who are now 24, 25 yeah. years old, now 20. Yeah, that was a huge that was a huge learning curve for me too. We played on a big sheet, so it's kind of nice I didn't have to worry too much about the <laughs> physicality of it. Yeah, that's true. But it was just a, a huge eye opener cuz you come from a small town, you don't have that right path to yeah. where you're going. Yeah. And then you end up in a situation where everybody has a different path and we're all playing on the same team. Yeah. That's I think cool. that, was, that was like a mindset I had. It's like, well, if I played four years in the OHL or in the Quebec League, I could possibly have 
be in the American League or yeah. drafted. Mm-hmm. Percentages are so small. Mm-hmm. There's so many guys. We all end up in the same place. Oh, yeah. And like we all ended up in school. Mm-hmm. And then, so I was playing with guys, like, like I said, all these mm-hmm. different career, career paths. And one guy, the one coach there, um, I forget his first name, Millie, David Millick. Mm-hmm. He, he was the assistant coach for the Gulf Storm. He worked with mm-hmm. first rounders and top end yeah. skill. He yeah. was one guy that was, I think, took notice of me and was like, okay, we got to work on yeah. this, yeah. this, 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 this. So yeah. he really um, fine tuned some skills that I had. Yeah. That I think eventually, or he, he taught me some things about the game where I still haven't learned, like yeah. time away from the puck. Yeah. Um, um, if you don't, there's not really a point to go to the puck because you're, mm-hmm. you're losing yeah. space for yourself. Mm-hmm. Finding different areas on the on the ice in the offensive zone to to be an option for somebody. Yeah, and doing little video sessions with him really opened yeah. my eyes to how to play pretty much offense. Yeah, because um, there wasn't like yeah that in, in that league. It's still pretty wide open. So yeah. and he wanted me to be. You know, he told me if he wanted to go to the next step. You still have you have to produce at a pretty high level in this league. Yeah. Um, so he taught me a lot then. Um, mm-hmm. no, and no. then fast forward to my my last year there, that was a very uh, emotional one too because we were we had now two good recruitment classes and we mm-hmm. went into that season like this is our year like we got to do it. Some guys were already flirting with going pro. Mm-hmm. Um, they decided to stay. Mm-hmm. So we're like this is the year to do it because guys are going to start to yeah. go after the third year. And we started this, we started the year off three and three and 11. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, you know how you get so hyped up for the season? Yeah. Oh yeah. Just, I like, talk to guys about that all the time. Everyone's yeah. like, coaches hyping us up. Like yeah. we got it. And we <laughs> just lay an egg the first half. So we're just like, God yeah. damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I don't I don't know if it was the Christmas dinners we everyone was having or or what yeah. it was. We came back from Christmas break and we went on an absolute heater. Yeah, I th- I think we went like twelve and three or something like that. I can't, okay, yeah, I can't really remember the numbers, but we yeah. we snuck in to the playoffs as yeah. the sixth seed. Yeah, I think they're six and six in the OUA. I can't remember. Yeah. But we snuck I, in yeah. in the last yeah. lot. Anyways, <laughs> so we snuck yeah. in and we just, I don't know, we just couldn't be beat. We'd yeah. go down one. Yeah. It's the best two or three. We'd go down one on the road, win at home, win yeah. on the road. Yeah. <laughs> down one on the road, win at home, win on the road. Yeah. And then we, we swept uh, Windsor, I think it was. And then we played UQTR, who was, I think, the second best team. Yeah, yeah, they were good at that time. Uh, East Conference. Yeah. And they came in to our rink, and we just smashed them. <laughs> and it was just like, we, we were all like, after, we were just like, what just happened? Yeah. Like, we That's were in the cool. dumps. Yeah. Like, rock bottom Christmas, and then yeah. next thing you know, we're – Plug yeah. in and lifting the trophy over our head and partying yeah. like yeah. the world was going to end. Yeah. Um, that was yeah, pretty So cool. that was a pretty, that was yeah. a crazy year too, because that one was like, mm-hmm. for myself, I'm like, this is how my university career is going to end. Mm-hmm. I kind of knew I had a chance to go pro. There was already talks of yeah. some East Coast teams trying to recruit me. Yeah. Um, but. It was just tough because I didn't want to go out with yeah. the guys like that. Yeah. Because I don't know, uh, guys you have yeah. on this played university. That's yeah. the one time besides junior where you're pretty much with the same eighteen guys. Yeah. For three, three to five years. Yeah. It's a cool you're with time. Them every day you're doing schoolwork together. You're partying together you're playing yeah. together you're yeah 
do things together and you're like a real close family and that was like shit i don't want to go out with these guys being like last yeah. place yeah, yeah so exactly it was a very special uh time that i'll yeah. always remember playing yeah. that last year oh yeah. for sure and then and then you jumped and then you jumped and went to the coast at the end of that year right like uh, after yeah. you guys won and then got some games in and got into the HL. So that, like that was a lot of different leagues and, uh, and progression all like pretty, <laughs> it was pretty just, tight. Yeah. It was progression. Um, and then I asked, we went to nationals. We did well there. Mm -hmm. And then I got a, I was going to go to one team. I think it was rapid city mm -hmm. in the East coast league. Um, but then I got a call from Cincinnati and the coach was Matt McDonald. Mm -hmm. and he was the brother of a former player that I played with mm -hmm. and he called me and he was the one guy that called me and who was straight honest with me mm -hmm. oh and I like that from my from my experiences before guys who tiptoe around or give you those like iffy answers mm -hmm. I was just like sick of it like they yeah. just weren't straight shooters with me and I yeah. started to lean towards people who just told me straight up like yeah hey nick you're gonna be on the third line if you come here yeah like, at least i had an understanding not <laughs> oh we're gonna give you this this that, like and yeah. you show up and it's not not what you expected yeah so he was straightforward right from the beginning i felt very comfortable with him mm -hmm. and uh yeah i ended up going to cincinnati mm -hmm. and and that was another eye opener for me too because like it, the same analogy about everyone ends up at the same place. Yeah. Now I'm in the East Coast League. I'm like, holy shit, another step. Like now you're playing in like yeah. uh, 10,000 yeah. seats arena. You're, yeah. you're actually now affiliated with an NHL team. You're playing yeah. with first round draft picks who should yeah. be in the NHL or yeah. third round draft picks who played and now you're on, they're on your team. You're just yeah. like, what an eye opener yeah um for that was but they made me feel very comfortable they've yeah. my mindset there was just to do do well keep playing the same game that was in our first meeting i had with them when i arrived mm -hmm. uh, yeah the whole experience was crazy because i showed up and i didn't know you had to pay for your own meals <laughs> I, I did. I, yeah. that was my first experience with per diem yeah, yeah. So like I'm at, I'm at the restaurant or at breakfast the next morning and I'm like, why is everyone paying? Like, is it just like, <laughs> do you know pay for this? And lucky enough, I knew one of the guys on the team. And, yeah. Oh, you haven't got your per diem yet. I was like, per diem? <laughs> I, lucky I paid for it, whatever. And I got to the rink and then the coach gave me like yeah. the per diem package and I was like, wow this is yeah now i feel like this is the real deal this is pro hockey yeah and then uh fortunately it didn't take long for me to score my first goal it was in south carolina yeah uh, i think it was game two actually yeah um but i was skating for the first time the tempo was higher um, yeah guys are just overall skill set was higher mm -hmm. the game was chippier yeah um, and it, and it was just like my mindset was like, wow, this is, this is pretty, pretty fun. Yeah. I, enjoyed it. I, enjoyed it. I was like, wow, what a what a long way to go, just to, and to just to be here. I should be pretty excited about it and proud about it. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then the last step was, I think the biggest one of all, was mm -hmm. to get called up after the East Coast season. Mm -hmm. That's when I really found like the taste of being that close mm -hmm. to the NFL. Yeah. Showing up to Adirondack and seeing like Trevor Gillies there. Yeah. And and got other guys who were in the NHL who just got sent down. Yeah. How it's pretty much you versus the guy sitting beside you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I well, I was always like I've always had that comfort level so far everywhere yeah. I've been. Yeah. Um at Guelph, I didn't I didn't worry about trades. Yeah. Junior had a little bit. Yeah. 
And then the coast, I was only there for a little bit of time. I didn't really yeah. see all the transactions, yeah. but I was one coming in. So I mm -hmm. was a little timid of it. But then yeah. when I got to the American League, I was like, what is this? Yeah. It was like a whole other world. I was yeah. like, their practice uh, styles. That was the first time I ever got like really hit in practice. <laughs> <laughs> like blown up in practice <laughs> really Big TV man like just yeah. monster yeah hammered me with nice in a three-on-two drill yeah <laughs> guys like uh on the fly changing um yeah hitting into each other trying to get on the out of, like on and off the boards quick yeah and just like what what is going on and then it took me a little bit yeah um and a conversation with Gillies actually like this is pro hockey like yeah just, you have to be on your game 100% of the time at mm -hmm. practice in the weight room even mm -hmm. in game obviously in games um cuz they're fighting for that one spot guys are like mm -hmm. happy but a little bit upset yeah. cuz Jim beside me who's a forward is now getting called up to Calgary and I'm not yeah so it's like that was the first time it was like, wow, this is, this is what it takes to play hockey at this level. Yeah. No, that's and, pretty cool. Yeah. That was a, the biggest year for me to like really understand what it was like to be at yeah. that level. Yeah. yeah. Oh, hundred percent. That's a, a lot of lessons. Right. And it's a, and you end like back to back, right. Like going from Guelph to the, the coast and then to the A it's, it's, it's pretty cool. And, and especially given the journey that you've been on too, because you know, it's not like you were drafted to the NHL expecting all of a sudden to be in the NHL, you know, in X amount of years, it was uh, kind of, you, you worked for it and you earned it through your own path and, and persistence. And, uh, and you know, one of the things that I think stood out there was like a couple of the coaches you had, like in Woodstock and Guelph that, you know, you found coaches that you trusted and believed in you and, uh, and gave you tools and resources. And, that, and obviously you were open and willing to work with them and that, all that extra ice time and, and Woodstock and all those things kind of paying off. And, um, and, and I also really like, we talk a lot about, um, you know, you know, cause a lot of guys going through junior finding their own path, like it's tough, right? I was talking to Maione earlier this week and it's like, you know, you have to do what you feels right. And I think, you know, that straight shooter analogy is a, a great one like you went to a place where you knew what was up so then you could be more comfortable being there and just you know play like you said your game and then and then yeah but then you're getting all these lessons and it's like yeah, yeah. like eye opening but at the same time you know you got to just be yourself and and play your style so no, those are those are great stories buddy i, I appreciate you sharing them the yeah. um one of the let, let's let's switch gears then to like obviously you you play a couple more years in the coast and did pretty well and then, you know, what was the, the like and the decision to jump from the coast to when you've been in Germany for the last three years? What's, uh, what's that been like? Oh, that's been, a, that's been an eye-opener, too, on just a, a whole other level. Um, and I think my time after my third, I guess my second year in the coast, um, after not getting called up uh, back to the American League, um, I just thought it was a time to – get a change of scenery um, yeah. something new I heard a lot of good things about going over to Europe mm -hmm. um, I wasn't getting younger obviously yeah. so I, I thought it was a good time to make the transition I had mm -hmm. a couple good decent years in uh, Cincinnati yeah. um, which set me up for it mm -hmm. uh, I just thought it was a good time to, to get over um, and yeah, that was an eye opener because they, they, I think they see hockey. It's just different. It's a different mindset towards hockey. Mm -hmm. um, they're more like uh, a lot of workouts, a lot mm -hmm. of ice sessions. Yeah. Where in uh, North America, it's like it's all scheduled or it's all calculated a little bit more. Yeah. There's more, it seems like there's more advancements in the game mm -hmm. uh, training wise on ice time and stuff like that yeah. um but that was that was a, an eye-opener going to a country where i was lucky enough i went to germany so english was a language that spoke yeah. pretty frequently yeah uh, and, I, and i went to a city and organization that 
is very beautiful and, yeah. and the organization is was great to me right when I arrived. Yeah. Um, but it was a it was a learning curve how to play their system of hockey when mm -hmm. I'm so used to the North American style and the systems. Mm -hmm. They pretty much flipped it on me where it's man on man. So that took me a long time to mm -hmm. to play a man on man defense. Yeah. Um, switching back to a big sheet. Yeah. And uh, just the overall gameplay. It's very offensive. Yeah. In uh, in the, the second league in Germany, a mm -hmm. lot, a lot of chances. You trade chances with the other team, mm -hmm. and it took me, it took me the whole whole season to kind of figure out uh, how to play. <laughs> and, and, yeah. and even the coach, like the coach, was an older German guy, yeah, who spoke very little English. So I had to learn how to, yeah, maneuver through what he liked. Yeah. It's just different. It's just very different from coaches that I've had. Yeah. Um, in previous years, who who who've trusted me, even though that I was like in Cincinnati, I was very poor defensively. He still mm -hmm. put trust in me to to play me every night. Mm -hmm. um, Wolf trusted me. This guy yeah. came in. I, maybe I wasn't as an import because you only love four. Mm -hmm. Didn't elevate the team to that level yeah. where. You might have yeah. thought imports should take them. Yeah. But I just didn't have that same um, maybe trust level or connection with the with the coach that I've had in years past. So yeah. that was a little bit of a an eye opener for me. Lucky I mm -hmm. had great imports that helped me maneuver through the year to get comfortable in the city and and with the lifestyle change and on ice stuff. Um, All right, a little disconnect there, but we're, we'll keep going. You're, you're talking about, uh, um, you know, playing in Germany there and, and the experience and, you know, getting that fit in. Cause obviously it was a bit of a, a transition at start, but you know, it's been progressing in the right direction. I don't know if there's a couple more points you want to hit on there. Yeah. Uh, big thing. It was after, after that first year there, the coach, I guess the coach and I didn't really see eye to eye. Um, so I, when I left there, I was like, oh, God, I'm not going to have a job um, yeah. the coming season because it's very uh, stat-based in Europe mm -hmm. from yeah. my understanding. Mm -hmm. um, that's how they recruit players from North America. If they don't mm -hmm. have a very decorated um, elite prospects, that's how they, they pull players through word and mouth and um, stat-checking. Mm -hmm. Well, my first year there, I think I had 10 points under a point a game mm -hmm. in a league where import should be a point a game yeah. is the bar. Yeah. So I was like, damn. Um, nothing came until I think June, late, late May or, or June, which I think is a pretty late, uh, late time to sign for, for your hockey. Mm -hmm. And the team, I was keeping an eye on the team and they, luckily did a whole revamp of organization yeah. in the organization. So they, they hired the assistant coach mm. who lucky enough, I was spending time with learning the game. He was a younger guy. Yeah. Um, he helped me again with how to play the European style. Mm -hmm. And I think they had a, they had an issue, issue with another import that they wanted to get. Um, so I was like the emergency, emergency backup. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so which was very lucky for me like yeah thank the hockey gods for it because mm -hmm. uh they ended up sending me a contract which i which i took obviously and mm -hmm. that ended up being the best year that i had mm -hmm. i think all professional wise mm -hmm. i uh i ended up leading our team in goals yeah. um we ended up uh, into the semifinals of the league. Mm -hmm. It was a roller coaster year too because we were um, we had a new coach again. He got unfortunately got fired halfway through the season, so he ended yeah. up picking up a new coach. Started yeah. slow, ended up finishing strong. Um, but that was like a, the first year where I was like, "Wow, this I can get used to this European style hockey." 
it's like, mm-hmm. I don't know if my mindset just understood what was going on or I had, I had a good line mates where we were able to find each other and it, everything just clicked. Mm-hmm. But my mindset was like, I, I understand the game now and I know how to be in great areas to score and mm-hmm. be in great areas defensively to really dominate some games and mm-hmm. be play on a more consistent uh, level. Mm-hmm. And then fast forward to this year, it was a, uh, it's a trend with our hockey team over there. Yeah. Same thing, slow start. <laughs> coach gets, coach gets axed again. <laughs> so now we bring up another guy and yeah. it's just, it's, it's like a, like a Ferris wheel there. It's a, yeah. so we start slow, coach fire. Now we finish very good. Yeah. good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's the same way. I ended up, we ended up keeping the same line mates yeah. and, uh, I, which, which I find over there helps a lot. If you could, yeah. if you could find, uh, a pair or a line that you, you really click, yeah. maybe, maybe more in second leagues yeah. around Europe or it's probably some top leagues. It's, yeah. it's the same. Yeah. Um, if you find people that you click with oh, yeah. and you know, you're going to, produce x amount mm-hmm. um it's very important to try to stay together because yeah. you guys will build your your careers yeah. together and going off individually and risking it every season on a new team and on a new club mm-hmm. uh, or a new league um, but yeah there's some there's some low times for me this year it's like yeah in a in a league where you should be able to probably get not to sound cocky or anything, but it's a league where you could probably get three grade A scoring chances mm-hmm. uh, yeah. game. Um, and there was times where I was chasing down 20 goals and I didn't score for um, five games. Yeah. My mindset was like, what is going on? Yeah. And it's yeah. not like I was, I was losing, not yeah. getting chances, yeah. but it's just like, what? How am I not beating these guys? Yeah. I beat them last year quite a bit. Yeah. I've beaten them early this year. Yeah. And it's just the mindset of just sticking with the routine. Yeah. Maybe working on a few things in practice leading up to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just staying with it because it was like very, you know, your mindset in hockey could switch right. from playing with confidence to being in the dumps. Like, yeah. You're always second guessing stuff, and your yeah. line mates are maybe on you. Or mm-hmm. but I think I found the biggest thing for me was just staying to the routine, mm-hmm. and maybe switching mindsets a little bit going into games. Maybe not going like, all right, we're playing the eighth place team. It should be mm-hmm. a point night. Yeah, no, that's um, problematic when you do that. <laughs> yeah, and I, I still at 28, I'm still thinking that like it's yeah. a weird like yeah. which I should know better from. Yeah, some hard chats. Thousands of games I played before. Yeah, yeah. I still have mindset, and you yeah. go out, and you don't, you can't even yeah. stick it the puck past the, the offensive blue line, or yeah. Yeah. you're setting you set five people up, and you're registering zero yeah. outcome. Yeah, um, oh, for sure. Yeah, and that's that's, a, that's big, a big question I want to dive a bit more into too. Is just like because obviously you've you've produced quite a bit since you know, Woodstock or even pretty much your whole career, you know, the queue was a bit tough, but then, um, you know, Woodstock, you know, Guelph, the East coast league and then in Germany, like you've, you've been putting up numbers. Right. And, uh, and then, like you said, there's always going to be times where, um, you know, the numbers aren't coming. Right. And then it's like, you know, like, and how do you stay confident? How do you, you know, overcome those kind of little mini slumps or bigger slumps and, um, and just, you know, keep, you know, cause you've been pretty steady, you know, you know, just, you know, given that story, but still, you're still pretty steady. Like you've been pretty consistent for years now. And that's, you know, a huge testament to you and your mindset, although you're human and there's going to be times where you get in your own head and doubt yourself. You know, you've, you've obviously done pretty well pulling yourself over that each time um, and shifting your mindset, like you said, and like, Hey, don't set yourself up with those expectations. But, um, and, and the other thing I would comment knowing you a bit as well is like, you know, my description of you as well is like, you know, you're a good guy doing things the right way versus like, you know, 
kind of like faking it and being like arrogant and, and coming across that way. And like, you know, kind of trying to put others down to put yourself up. Like that's definitely not how I'll, I don't think anybody would describe you. And um, yet you're still able to produce and you let your, you know, your actions do the work and you talked about staying in a routine, you know, self-checking your own mindset and being like, Hey, is, is, am I in the right mindset going to this game or, you know, am I a little too, too outcome focused? I don't know if you want to elaborate on that. And I got some other kind of probes to, to throw it at, but I think, you know, for, especially for any guy that's an offensive guy and even goalies focus on their stats and, and other sports, you know, we, we get too caught up in the stats and the stats don't come our way and, and it can throw off our, our, our mental game and our mindset. So I'd lo- love right. to get your take on that a little more. And I think, and I think where my mind comes from, it's like or from the people around me, yeah. um, we don't maybe come off as arrogant or, yeah. or cocky. It's just the, the yeah. people who I've been surrounded by, yeah. right from CHT, like yeah. my parents weren't like that. You guys weren't like that. Um, yeah. And as I went through my career, I always surrounded myself with people who Mm -hmm. I have always had some players who are top elite level skill who had a little bit of it. And Mm -hmm. I do like some of that. Mm -hmm. And I do like how they, Mm -hmm. they flex and they're like, yeah, I'm, I'm legit. And they actually go out and prove it. Mm -hmm. I do like, I do wish I had a little bit more of that a little bit, but I think a lot of my personality around the whole um my game is just from people that I've grew with mm-hmm. and surrounded myself with um throughout my career. Um and then and then to the mindset, yeah, I I think I just have I don't shoot for the stars yeah. necessarily. I have more realistic um goals. Expectations, yeah, goals. Expectations yeah. and goals that I've uh I just started to do I I've always had them kind of mm-hmm. as I played. Yeah. But it wasn't until which is crazy. So yeah. maybe here it was <laughs> just before Christmas um my second year in Dresden is where I actually wrote down yeah. goals on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> I, I forget how many games left. There yeah. was maybe 20 yeah. I don't know, 20 some games left. And I yeah. put down like, well, I think I still have them on my phone. I put down like eight yeah. goals yeah. that would get me over 20 yeah. and 15 points. Yeah. And that was the first time I was like, every game I was like thinking about yeah. my goals. Yeah. Before I was just, did I score? Did I get a point? Like, yeah. You know, kind of I, I, have, tried, yeah. I have the goal in my mind, but it's like when I physically see it, I don't know yeah. if it gave me a little bit more. Um, like I was more conscious of it going in, having yeah. a little bit different mindset. Yeah, no, and it'll help, it'll help you manage your expectations better too, right? Because then it's if it, a lot of guys have expectations on the back of their head, and and then they don't ever say it aloud, and those expectations are nuts. Like, I'm like I'm going to be two points a game this year. No, you're yeah. not. Like, it's like yeah. why why are you setting that expectation and goal in, in your head? And then it's like once you actually put it down like it, and get a reasonable one. We actually just do an exercise in our group about the difference of expectations versus intentions. So what am I yeah. intending to get with the goal in that way versus what are you expecting that you should get? And you want to have that as a healthy range and expectation and let that go and just focus on what you want to do to get the intended results uh, and focus on the process. And, and so it's pretty unique that you say that as well. I want to dive at that because, um, like, you know, I'm big on being cautious of, you know, focusing too much on outcomes, right? And like a lot of your career, you probably fairly process focused, but, you know, clearly aware of the outcomes at times. And, you know, and then sometimes that can linger into expectations if it's not addressed. So, you know, there's kind of a reason to bring them to the forefront so you can, you know, understand them and and put them at, at bay within reason. And then you just dive into your intentions and how you want to play um, and so obviously you've, you've done that in different ways, uh, uh, throughout your career. So that, that's really cool. And now, and jumping back to, like you said about confidence and, and arrogance and kind of wanting it, but, you know, coming from where you came from, the thing I always like to reinforce, and I think you're a, a great example of is have, having an accurate self image, um, mm-hmm. and, uh, and not inflating yourself, but also trying not to deflate yourself. And I think you've, you know, come about it very honestly, where you've kind of built your self image through the hard work and the 
the time you've put in, right? Like a lot of guys, you know, not getting drafted or didn't make that junior team or then got, you know, traded in the Quebec league or, you know, something else didn't work out and all those different adversities you face, they can let it throw away their, their self image, or you go on a game of not scoring for five games um, and it can let their self image really drop where I think you've able to stay an accurate self image. Um, and that's helps leads to a ton of consistency, right? So, yeah. um, so yeah, no, those are good points. I liked uh, the way you brought them up. I don't know if you want to add anything else to that, but um, you know, creating offense can be a finicky thing at times. Right. And um, yeah, then you yeah, but and you've done a great job to create a lot of it over, over your uh, over your career. So uh, your yeah. insights are definitely appreciated. Yeah, it's just something that uh, it's it's been growing. Sometimes now it's almost like sec second nature from all the mm -hmm. repetitions and mm -hmm. and um, learning from different people. I think the yeah. biggest thing is I've had so many different coaches or different insights and outsides of the hockey game itself where you can take little nibbits of everybody's thing yeah. and you create it and you put your own little spin on it too where you're able to now you you see different scenarios in a hockey game and mm -hmm. I also watch a lot of video of our mm -hmm. games like they put uh our highlights on YouTube yeah so I'll and or a, a tool they started using this year was uh um instat i think it is yeah. where the coach sends us the full game and it already it already clipped it right down to Your the last shift. Yeah. Yeah, shift by shift yeah and i'll watch that it's a tool that was ingrained in a lot of hockey players at a, a young mm -hmm. age and yeah. i like to study the game and more so myself like i like mm -hmm. watching myself play because mm -hmm. realistically it's our job right now and yeah. i need to find, find ways to mm -hmm say I didn't score for three games, rewatch those games. Or if we play them again in two weeks, watch the and be like, yeah. who could I expose? Who who do I try to stay away from? How do we mm -hmm. attack? Find all these different little tools and di these little weakness in the other opponent to enhance ourselves. Because we all want to do well. Um, we all want to meet our goals. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, those are some things where I, I yeah. still try to do on a consistent basis to. Yeah, you gotta keep growing. You gotta keep your head sharp. You're you're yep. focused on what you're doing each day because it keeps. That that's the cool thing about hockey and life. Even is just like it never ends. Right? It's not like oh yeah, I've mastered scoring goals now. Now I don't have to work on it anymore. <laughs> like now you gotta stay sharp. There's that's you gotta stay sharp. Keep growing, and I think video is such a big thing, and uh, especially in today's age where it's much more accessible. Like you know, even like some youth players and stuff like your parent can just easily iPad, you know, a phone video, your shifts and you can quickly review them. And it's uh, something simple they do. It helps with hockey IQ, right? It helps them keep learning, stay mentally sharp and focus on what they can do and what they did well and keep doing it when they can do differently. So I'm no, glad, glad to hear, you know, that's been a, been a big thing for you. Um, one of the other things I'd, I'd like to dive into a bit is just pressure as well. Like you kind of mentioned it being an import and some of the pressure there obviously you've played some pretty big games and, you know, going up to the AHL and going to like when every time you jump to those new levels, there's always kind of different pressures. And, um, and then, you know, how much pressure you feel like you put on yourself is often a big thing. And, and so maybe just, you know, evolving and, and diving into how you dealt with pressure. Like I would assume you probably do a pretty decent job of, you know, keeping perspective of the pressure. So it doesn't really over feel overwhelming, right? Like it's pressure is yeah. not some inherently bad thing. It can use us to, to play well um but some guys you know they put too pressure on themselves in an unhealthy way and so i'd be yeah. curious to your take on that like you, know, you probably had that at times but it seems like obviously you've, you've dealt with it pretty well and, and knowing you and your mindset uh, you could get your take yeah. yeah i've had pressure kind of in both senses it's a lot obviously it's a lot easier having pressure saying you're you're a, just a player and you're in a in a big game and you just want to have be the big moment, you know, yeah. have that big goal or a big block shot and, a, and the pressure of just losing that game on a team aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, that pressure I feel is like very healthy and it's what mm -hmm. every editor yeah. wants. And yeah. you want to be that guy. You go into the game excited, but you yeah. also know the pressure of the what if you lost or yeah. what if you didn't score. Mm -hmm. Like 
that's the type of pressure where people could live with yeah. their the rest of their life with knowing like, Hey, he went out and he did it all on the line and yeah. he didn't score under that pressure, Yeah, but he put so much work in before yeah. to get, yeah. Get that and I've also had pressure where it's like, where it's coming from management. And I think mm-hmm. that's the pressure where, yeah. or, or even on yourself where you haven't scored in four or five games and then yeah. your coach is giving you pressure. And then that's yeah. the stuff where it's like, you really have to mm-hmm. find in yourself to like almost not block it out. Cause you have to be self-aware of mm-hmm. like, Hey, if you don't pick up your own game, yeah. you could be out yeah. or out of a job or traded. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's just the stuff where I think you have to be mentally strong. You have to, maybe have some self-awareness of or or understand of what aspect of the game that they don't really aren't liking from you Mm -hmm. and the pressure is coming say if i haven't scored for five games yeah maybe the pressure is on my back i could feel it but maybe i make i win like five six defensive zone Mm face-offs or I ended up being plus two in the game with no points or mm-hmm. instead yeah. of me scoring a goal, I'll try to block a shot and maybe it'll just find another aspect in the game where you could find yeah. um, Those little wins. a little bit of light and a little bit, they could say like, okay, he's bringing another aspect to the table for the team instead of, yeah. yeah. Cause the people that you're around, they understand slumps. They understand. Yeah. They're not dumb people. <laughs> they understand what, what humans they're going through. Yeah. It's different if they don't like you and they're just <laughs> just making you rot. But yeah. <laughs> like, I've had pressure where I've been a in the East Coast. I was like minus twenty. Yeah. And the coach like I could feel it. Like another goal, I get scored on for another goal. And I could just feel it, feel it. Yeah. But he would he would put me on the power play. Yeah. And I was lucky enough where if I got a chance, my mindset was like, okay, I have to score on the power play to keep in the lineup and get a stick on it and go in or I get a chance. And it would like, you, you have to take what the pressure is coming from and try to find another little aspect of the game to maybe give you more breathing room, give you Mm -hmm. extending your time to, to find your game again because hockey yeah. players consistency is everybody's goal yeah everyone wants to be consistent if you're consistent you're going to be in the nhl or you're going to be yeah. taking always taking the next step yeah so that's one way i found to deal with it is if i started to get pressure even in germany from people and you could yeah. they do it a little different they would tell you right to your yeah. face like <laughs> Yeah. I've had the GM come up and be like, "Well, you haven't scored in a few games, eh?" Like as a joke, but like yeah. <laughs> making sure you're aware. <laughs> yeah, like I know I haven't scored. Like I'm, the reason why I'm here is to score. Like I know, yeah. yeah. kind of like stab in the back. Yeah. But he and he says it in a joke, but he's serious, and I'm like, "Damn, like okay, I got to find a way to yeah. score and have results because I need like that's what's." going to keep yeah. money coming for me yeah. but i'm able to find different ways to maneuver that harder stress mm-hmm. um, from management and and stuff like that just finding different areas of the game to to maybe oh. take a little bit off be yeah. better in another area here or there and yeah. you know, it's your, your teammates see that yeah. They'll understand if you're struggling, but you show up doing something yeah. that maybe not fully characteristic of you, yeah. of your game. Yeah. Sometimes even see that be like, okay, he's he's struggling in in scoring, but he's at least gonna yeah. show his teammates that he's he gives a shit. Yeah. So 100%. I'm gonna take a little bit of a little bit off the the pressure until yeah. he maybe finds his way back. Yeah. And just sticking to your routine and and if you have any free time work on the little things that you might be yeah 100 percent stressing about yeah. i feel like those are big key points too though no those are awesome and and i think that that also helps with the, obviously a big you know 
internal thing is just keeping perspective, which is, you know, your game and contribution is never just limited to points, right? Like pretty rare that that's, you know, there's our little pieces and, and sometimes, yeah, you got to pick up the slack somewhere else, like you said, and, uh, and also having perspective, like you said, everybody knows, at least most people know, like it's going to happen. Like you're not going to score every game. You know, I use the example a lot, like Crosby once had like a 20 game score the streak, right. In the NHL, he got some apples and whatever, but like literally didn't score a goal for like 20 some games. Like it was one of the best players in the world. Like, so it, it happens, right? And um, and and Another maintaining perspective. That, I think is is Line. A. I think he yeah he ended up with thirty goals and he didn't score. He yeah. was getting shit on in Winnipeg. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He had a huge one I last year. Getting yeah. shit on. Yeah. For like three months, he had two goals in three months, and then yeah. he ended up with thirty. Yeah, yeah. Just like <laughs> yeah, because the guy had great. Yeah. So it's, so you got to have that perspective yourself and that's sometimes hard if people around you aren't and, or you're worried about what they think. And, and as long as you have that perspective, you know, that that's what matters. And, you know, time does that, but also your mindset and your attitude, and like you said, the people around you. So yeah. all, those are all uh, very helpful and um, um, not sure if you have any other like uh, key lessons or things you want to share with uh, any of the listeners. And, but uh, I, you know, my highlights here, just, you know, your your commitment to sticking with it and um and you know you know you faced some adversities but you never really let those get you down and you just kept moving forward and made smart decisions and and then where you were prepared for your opportunities right so um it's it's a great testament to to guys you know that you know you can pave your own path and there's lots of different paths out there so um you have any other thoughts or or things that uh you want to maybe touch on uh no maybe just yeah if uh, if it doesn't happen for you tomorrow in the OHL yeah. draft, there's so many different paths to get to um, the goal that you want, mm-hmm. um, and just be realistic in 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 your in your dreams. I know a lot of guys obviously want the NHL, but then at a certain time, there's so many more options out there for yeah. to play hockey, and yeah. maybe and and just be realistic. He could maybe end up in the first league in Germany or Denmark mm-hmm. or Sweden or mm-hmm. with so much more experience that this game could, uh, this game could give you. Yeah. And um, yeah. What's it? And the saying is like, don't bend, don't break. Yeah. Is that exactly. The saying? Yeah. 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 So when times are tough, yeah, you could bend, but don't let everything uh, break mm-hmm. you in half. Cause there's yeah. always light at the end of the tunnel. No, for sure. Well, thanks so much, buddy. We'll, uh, we'll get you to join in on some of our daily group calls right now. And uh, it's, it's definitely been a pleasure catching up and, and getting to share your story. I know a lot of guys will appreciate it. So thanks again. Yeah, thanks for having me, bud. Awesome.